So the trial or the period of tshuva repentance started at the Feast of Trumpets, and it goes all the way 10 days for the judgment. Yom Kippur. The day of judgment, you could say the sentencing day, the verdict mm-hmm. day, when the verdict of our life is read and sealed in the book of life. Yeshua says in Matthew, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne of glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. It's at this time that the sentence is given, some to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Yeah, and, the, and Yom Kippur was in the, in the Torah and in tradition was always some kind of a judgment, expectancy for a judgment. And of course, in the Torah, it's all about the works of the high priest. As for us with the New Testament, it's all about the works, the finished works of the high priest. And if, if you trust in him, you will not be judged for your sins. Right. Because he took it upon himself. Welcome to another Pod for Israel, and we have a special question today looking at Judgment Day. Yom Kippur. Whoa, Yom Kippur Judgment Day? (laughs) That's that's an interesting thing. You know, we've thought of it as Repentance Day, but again, this is kind of in in this new series, we're kind of looking at these holidays from a a fresh perspective. There's something something new here that we're finding that is uh, kind of discovering a different perspective on these holidays and the return of Yeshua. Yeah, now it's fresh in in, in one way, but but, but from rabbinic tradition, remember the repentance starts on the day of trumpets and it goes 10 days to Yom Kippur where the judgment is being sealed. The judgment is being, uh, it's coming. So yeah, we discussed uh, the Feast of Trumpets, and we started to crack open this whole idea of the 10 days of all. So again, in Jewish tradition, between the trumpet, mm-hmm. you know, on the Feast of Trumpets, between the trumpet sound and Yom Kippur, there's 10 days of Ten reflection days of shuvah. and repentance. Yeah, of repentance. Right. So the book of Revelation, many other prophets like Isaiah and Daniel mention this judgment day in this great redemption as our Messiah returns in glory, he initiates the final Aliyah, bringing home the exiles of Israel as the book of life is opened. Mm. And now what's that phrase that's repeated over and over again? If you're in the Orthodox community and or traditional community, you're going to hear people say in Hebrew, they would wish one another Gmar Chatima Tova. So have a good signature in heaven. Okay, and so they, they, they also say, may your name be written in the exactly. book of life. They're speaking of the book of life. Now, where do we have reference from this? Uh, one of the first references is, is with Moses. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when he's negotiating with God and he's, he's basically interceding for the children of Israel, yeah. he says, yeah. hey, blot my name out of the book of life, uh, but, but have, have mercy on your people. Uh, so he's, he's interceding for the children of Israel at that time, and he's mentioning this book of of life. Mm-hmm. Now, we see that all through the New Testament and the Old Testament as well. We're looking at the 10 days of all, and that's the greeting that's traditionally given. We're speaking about this book of life. And according to the rabbis, they believe that on Yom Turah, the book is opened. Yes. With all the rabbinic tradition, we <laughs> kind of have to discern through and, and pick through what's uh, what's really relevant and what matches with good doctrine and scripture. But it's interesting to look at the historical Jewish thought through the ages. We see that it's following this redemption, the book of life is opened, mm-hmm. and God sets up thrones of judgment, condemning the Antichrist and his followers who fought against Israel. In every court system around the world, yes. Okay, there's a period of time where evidence is weighed, the case is brought to the court, the prosecute and the defense, they deliberate. You know, it could take months, it could even take years. Of, of your court, you know, kind of battle, but there's a final day, right? The verdict. Yeah, the sentencing day. You you get the verdict read, and so we see a similar pattern here. After the feast of trumpets, there's a period of ten days referred to as the ten days yeah. of all, culminating with Yom Kippur. This is the day that judgment is handed down. So the trial or the 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 the, the, the period of tshuva repentance started at Rosh Hashanah at the feast of trumpets. Yeah. And it goes all the way 10 days for the judgment. Right. When we think of 10, many attribute the number 10 in scripture to be completeness and judgment. Think of the 10 commandments or the 10 plagues. And at the end of these 10 days of judgment, we see the claims of God are met and the verdict is announced. We also see that whole rabbinic tradition, which means may you be sealed in the book of life. So it's interesting to see that all culminates on Yom Kippur. So 
As we know, in ancient Israel, on Yom Kippur, the high priest entered the temple alone to make atonement for Israel. Mm -hmm. Now for us, we're followers of Yeshua. We believe that Yeshua, our high priest, Jesus, our Messiah, he intercedes on our behalf at the mercy seat in the Holy of Holies. The epistles talk about that, of him being our high priest. Even though this appointed day is one of the most crucial and somber days in the biblical calendar, this is this is quite unique. It was one of the only days where all of Israel was instructed to shelter in place. Yes, and by the way, you know, many people think that the uh, the Day of Atonement in the Torah appears only in the first in the book of Leviticus, but actually it appears first in the book of uh, in the book of Exodus on the thirtieth chapter, verse ten. It says, "And the high priest will atone." for all Israel once a year, yeah, once for the whole year. And mm-hmm. the same language appears again in, in, in Exodus in the chapter that is devo- devoted for Yom Kippur in, uh, in, in, in Leviticus uh, 16. It says once a year, the same phrase, achat beshana, once right. a year. So we know uh, um, that we have hints for Yom Kippur even in Exodus, not only in the book of Leviticus. Right. And so you, you look at this, Unlike Passover, you know, I would bring my own lamb for Passover, right? You yep. know, if I was in the Galilee, I would have to travel, or if I was down in the yeah, Negev, yeah, I would travel up. It. I bring my own lamb. The Feast of First Fruits, I bring my offering. On Sukkot, I bring an offering. This, I don't bring anything. No. In fact, I don't, I'm not supposed to make pilgrimage on Yom Kippur. I'm supposed to stay where I'm at. Yeah. Now, and to put faith in the work of the high priest. Exactly. <laughs> so the Torah, it was very harsh on this. It said that whomever wouldn't fast or afflict themselves would be cut off from the house of Israel. Why? Is it just about the fasting? What was it about? Because of the atonement, because of the significance of this day. This was a crucial day once a year. Yeah. It, it shows the position of our hearts. Exactly. And so this, to me, I, I look at this holiday and I, I start to see how deeply it connects with grace through faith alone. Faith alone. I cannot bring this offering. I have to look to my high priest. Exactly. I can't go up there. I can't do a dadgum thing. Nothing I do can mount to anything. What I have to do is wait in faith. Wait. And so the person who's not fasting, what are they saying or not afflicting their souls? They're not taking it seriously. They're just kind of like, meh, it's just another day, meh, whatever. Yeah, oh, okay. and, the, and the sad part is that those who do fast think it's all about them fasting exactly. and them atoning. And, the, and the, they some take the rooster. But from a day that is all about the high priest, it became to be in Israel today. A holiday right. that is all about yourself. Are you fasting, brother? Have a, yeah. have a nice fast. Let me have show you how, how bad. And, and yeah. what did Yeshua say? If you fast, don't, you know, make your face all Don't sober. show it. Oh, don't show up. It's a hard thing, brother. <laughs> I'm just pushing through for the Lord, you know. No, 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 no. Uh, you're, you're to anoint your face with oil, you know, make it to where no one knows, okay? Exactly. This is between you and God. But what God was saying, again, we have to look at the commandments, not as just line upon line, precept upon precept. What was God trying to communicate? And what he was saying is, take it seriously. Make, you know, don't disassociate yourself from this salvation. And so here, the person, the person who's sitting there waiting on the high priest with expectation, believing that the high priest is doing something very important for them and the nation on that day. That person, God sees it and God blesses it. And the person who doesn't, who ignores and who treats it as just something common or something light, uh, that person is going to deal with judgment. There's something similar as well in the New Testament. Mm-hmm. Apostle Paul had to deal with the Corinthian church. First Corinthians chapter 11, yes. we read this whole drama that, that people were coming for the communion meal. For the Lord's Supper. And yeah. they were getting smashed drunk. They were eating ahead of everyone else. It wasn't, it wasn't a somber gathering to remember the sacrifice of the Lord. Now, how does that relate? Now, look at that in the light of this commandment for Yom Kippur. Here, these people were coming together and feasting for themselves, for their flesh. They didn't come to sanctify their hearts. And Paul's, Paul was saying, you know, judge yourselves. Hey, hey, check your heart mm-hmm. so that you're not judged by God. So 
It's interesting. The act of fasting is no credit towards righteousness or atonement. I mean, again, like what we said, uh, we have the flip side happening in legalism where people are thinking that they're earning something. Again, yeah, I'm, I'm they, not bringing... Yeah, if they afflict themselves enough... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, you know, I fasted on Yom Kippur. You didn't, you dirty heathen. You know, it's like <laughs> this uh, judgment and idea. It's not about that. It's no credit towards righteousness or atonement. But just as Paul warned the Corinthians, how we remember and honor our Messiah's sacrifice is a clear indicator, again, indicator to the position of our heart. Amen. So just to be clear... We're not saying that there's any requirement for us as believers in Yeshua to fast on this day. If you choose so, that's awesome. And some of you might be fasting and praying for your friends and neighbors who are lost and who do not know our Savior, Yeshua. So whatever God leads you to do on this day, maybe you're spending time with thankful worship and prayer, whatever it is. It's a great time to remember and reflect whatever God leads on your heart to do in this time. And especially to pray for our Jewish brothers and sisters around the world who don't know their Savior. And you know, by the way, there's a, a rabbinic tradition that says that there were no happy days. There's no, there were no more happy days than Yom Kippur and uh, another, another holiday in Av that were, that were so happy. For, for Israel, because what happened when the priest came out? Mm. So, the, so, so a certain rabbinic tradition, really a, ancient rabbinic tradition recorded in the Mishnah says it was the happiest day of the year yeah. for Israel when the priest came out of the Holy yeah. of Holies. And, and let's think about that. Like we look at Judgment Day with such a kind of a scary thing. This is a heavy thing. And it is, it's listen, if, if you, if you don't have a living relationship with Yeshua, if you, if you don't have a walk with him and, and if a relationship with the him. Messiah, yeah. it is a scary day. It's yeah. a somber day. It's uh, your worst day. But for us who've put our faith in Yeshua and the living Messiah, for us, it's the greatest day. It's the greatest day ever. It's a happy day. And, and so we see that you're talking about even in tradition, in the history, but also even today. This is the interesting thing about Israel and Dr. Sorif, uh, he touched on it in the previous podcast, is that you'll literally come from the somber day, fasting and mourning, and then once the sun goes down, it's Go. a party. Yep. It, because it's finished. It is finished, yeah. It is finished. So that's such a beautiful, beautiful picture of the atonement of Yeshua, and once it's applied, we cannot bring the sacrifice. It's nothing we can do. And look, as I stand before God way, on Judgment Day, yes. as I stand before Him on Judgment Day, I can't, you know, I'm not claiming, hey, look at all the good things I did, you know, hey, look at these great podcasts. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's nothing, it's nothing. I bring nothing. Even though they're great. <laughs> My high priest, Yeshua, did it all. You know, when all the wrong, and I mean, I'm guilty of sin, okay? When all that wrong is read, I mean, I'm in trouble, but I am not in trouble because my trust, faith yeah, is I in the atonement of our mind. And, and, and by the way, if, if our listeners weren't, ne were never in Israel in the day, in the day of Yom Kippur, you should, you should see it because everything yeah. literally stops. And, and, and nobody is, nobody is doing anything. It's like somebody's a suspense in the air. You know, it's like you, everything stops, right? Except for our children who go out into the streets <laughs> to drive uh, their bikes all around. But what, why can't they do on it? On the highway and why on the Why can't they drive? Because there's no cars. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing is open. No cars, no television, nothing. Yeah. It's, so so there's, there is a certain suspense in the air, right? There is. Wait for, wait for the judgment, for the verdict. Yeah, we're going to talk about, you know, how like how how to celebrate these days as a family in a way this is and again, it's not about if some people get caught in the legalism, you yeah, know, what do I me, do? What do I like, no. What an opportunity to teach your family through what God slated exactly. out already. He like he gave us a curriculum, you know, through these uh, holidays. He gave us a curriculum to teach our family. He gave us a living like go camp with your family, go spend time, go, you know, like all these things are interactive for us to remember and to train our children, you know, for the next generations to come, you know, the ways of God and the judgments of God. Yeah, to appreciate the, the those holidays as the blueprint for what's to come, right? Yeah. So again, this is a, 
this is a new this is kind of a new perspective for me. I hadn't looked at this in the past this way, but as we look at it, this is an old perspective according to some traditions, rabbinic traditions and things like that, but you know, when I look at it today, I see Yom Kippur points, points towards the day of judgment. You could say the sentencing day, the verdict mm-hmm. day, when the verdict of our life is read and sealed in the book of life. Yeshua says in Matthew, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne of glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at its left. It's at this time that the sentence is given, some to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Just, again, think about, you know, we just, Yom Torah, 10 days of awe. There's this gathering of the nations. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's quite interesting. When you kind of look at it in the context of the timing of these things, of these appointed days, and see how, how could this fit in? Maybe it could. But at least, even if it's not on that date, again, again, we're looking at God is weaving this story. He's preparing us through these holidays to, to look forward to his salvation and to celebrate yeah, what's and, yet and, to come. And, and Yom Kippur was always, at least in, in the Torah and in tradition, was always some kind of a judgment, expectancy for a judgment. And of course, in the Torah, it's all about the works of the high priest. Yeah. As 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 for us with the New Testament, it's all about the works, the finished works of the high priest, and 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 and, and if if you trust in him, judgment you 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 will not be judged for your sins right. because he took it upon himself. And so, guys, we have to ask ourselves the question: Where will you be on Judgment Day? Are you waiting with faith in the Messiah? Have you put your trust in the atonement of Yeshua? Are you still leaning on your own works to be good enough? So again, all prophecy and scripture leads us up to these world-changing events to come. Everything culminates here. But to each one of us, the most pivotal choice we'll make in our eternity is our choice to believe and follow the risen Messiah who's coming soon. Yeah, our high priest. And as we spoke, on the last episode, we spoke about Yom Torah. No one knows that day or the hour. Even the holiday, no one had any clue. You had to wait expectantly for it. Again, guys, it's not promised for us tomorrow. We don't look to, you know, all these guys with their mystical predictions of the the Messiah will come in 2028 or this will happen in 2032. Forget that. Forget that. You know, I I think that everyone, especially with the events of the last past, you know, few years, (laughs) has had kind of a imminence on their heart of like, this could be any moment. You know, we're not promised tomorrow. And, and that's our decision. We have to make that decision today. And so I, I, I ask you guys, yeah. press into him. If you haven't made that decision, yeah. let's get connected. And let's trust, get connected trust and the trust finish, in, the, in, the in the finished work, work of, our, of Messiah. Yeah, of, the, of, our high, of our high priest once and for all. Yeah. Only he can bring the atonement for us. Amen. Amen.